This is News 25 with Deanna O'Donnell and Stacy Jensen. News 25, local news you can count on. News is brought to you by J.K. Nelson Law. Give them a call, 727-9900. News is also brought to you by Desert View Hospital. You can count on us. And welcome to KPVM Local News 25. I'm Stacey Jensen. Deanna has the night off. It's Monday, July 18th. Residents of a single wide home on Pahrump South Side are homeless right now following a late night fire that caused significant damage to the structure. Early, uh, or actually late last evening, uh, we were dispatched for a report of a structure fire in Carson. The initial report included that it was well involved and that there were some occupants that may have been unaccounted for. As we arrived on location, we found a well involved single wide manufactured dwelling. There was an overabundance of personal property around and within the structure. Crews commenced a defensive exterior attack, quickly knocked down the main body of fire, but due to those accumulated materials, we were fighting small spot fires throughout the rest of the night. There was so much material that it was just holding in the, the fire and as we were moving from one area it would pop up in another. So a lot of overhaul that is not uncommon with a fire like that. And what's really remarkable is that, you know, considering it was a single wide to begin with it with a heavy fuel load, that the structure is still standing. Significant fire damage, but the fact that it's even standing at all is a testament to the activities of the firefighters last night. Uh, we did assess one patient for minor burns to an, an arm and an exacerbation of asthma, uh, possibly from a smoke inhalation. Both patients, or this, that patient decided not to go to the hospital and the second occupant was fine. It appears that the fire went undiscovered for a period of time. And then once it was discovered, there was, they were taking actions to try and suppress it and there was possibly a delay in notification of 911. They haven't requested assistance yet, but that is available to them. It appears that the fire may have originated on the front porch and the fire is under investigation. And a large fire burning at the dump site at Mesquite Avenue was under control quickly, thanks to many resources that quickly responded. While we were working the structure fire in the area of the homeless camp, we noticed a, smart, a very large developing smoke column approximately five miles north on the alluvial fan uh, we redispatched the assignment, added additional crews, and responded and found we had a large rubbers fire on the landfill. Uh, that was quickly controlled with uh, fire department apparatus as well as the uh, crews from the landfill who were extremely helpful in using heavy equipment to move the, the rubbish, the large mounds of rubbish material, to isolate pockets of fire. That made it a lot easier to extinguish. Considering the size of the pile and the nature of the mixed materials in that pile, very difficult to narrow it down to any wood ignition source, but as you mentioned, there could be improperly discarded materials that were brought into the landfill. There could be materials that ignited from other means while it was laying in that position in the field. So uh, we take everything into consideration. We consider this a high risk fire only because we want to make sure it doesn't start going deeper into the, the rubbish. We want to keep it at the surface level and get that fire knocked out as quickly as possible. There were no injuries. And again, the landfill crews were just extremely helpful. And police and fire authorities are investigating a report that a resident of a fifth wheel trailer possibly lit their own home on fire Sunday afternoon. Witnesses reported that they heard a person yelling and throwing things and possibly threw something into the RV at the time it ignited. Late yesterday, we have got a call for a report of a structure fire behind the prompt nugget. As crews were responding, we had a large dark color smoke column developing. We knew we were going to be going to work. Crews arrived to find a fifth wheel trailer used as a fixed residence, well involved. Uh, there was unknown initially whether there was anyone occupying that structure at the time of the fire. Crews commenced a defensive attack, quickly knocked down the main body of fire, did primary and secondary searches and found that there was no occupants in the structure. The fire is under investigation. There was a substantial damage to the structure. And we're working collectively with the uh, sheriff's office and trying to determine exactly who occupied that structure and what their last activities might have been. There were no injuries, no animals that we're aware of. And the Centers for Medicare and Medicaid Services is proposing actions to advance health equity and improve access to care in rural communities by establishing policies for rural emergency hospitals and providing for a payment for certain behavioral health services furnished via communications technology. They say the CMS is taking action to ensure that people with Medicare in rural and underserved areas have improved access to high quality health care and to pair for the next pandemic. 
The proposals in this rule, if finalized, will expand access care to options in rural communities and permanently allow behavioral health services to be provided to people in their homes, whereas also provisioning to adjust payments to account for the cost of domestically made surgical N995 respirators to ensure that hospitals and their health care workers are ready for the next pandemic. We'll be back with more News 25 right after this break. You're watching News 25, the most recognized and farthest reaching local news in Nye County. News 25, local news you can count on. This segment of News 25 is brought to you by Lisa Spahitz and Mike Plasmeyer at Country Financial Insurance. Auto, home, life, and commercial. 775-727-8920. And welcome back. Current Nye County Clerk Sandra Merlino will be retiring soon. Tomorrow, the Board of County Commissioners may be appointing her replacement. Merlino spoke about some of the things she has been working on and what the future may hold. Retiring Nye County Clerk Sandra Merlino says she is looking into tribal language being added to voting ballots. The Department of Justice says that 5% of population speaks it. The language is exclusively oral and consists of working closely with tribal elders to help translate the language for voters. They hope to have this in place for the upcoming election, which Merlino will not be a part of because she is retiring in August. The elder will work to transcribe written ballots, and Nye County will be the only place in the country to offer translation services to Shoshone, which consists of approximately 1,000 speakers in central Nevada and Wyoming. But the largest population resides in Duck Valley Indian Reservation in Nevada and Goshoot Reservation in Utah. Sam Marlino spoke to the Pahrump Valley Rotary Club about her departure, the upcoming appointment for her position, the voting systems, and paper balance in the recent meeting. But I'll talk a little bit about the election laws that passed in 2021 that many people still aren't aware of. Um, I think some people were really surprised to get mail-in ballots for the primary election, but that is now the law that you, everyone who's an active registered voter will receive a ballot in the mail unless you opt out. So there's a form, if you don't want to get that mail ballot, there's a form you can complete, turn it into our office, and essentially you won't get a mail ballot until you opt back in. I don't know if you're all aware of what's called automatic voter registration now. So automatic voter registration. So if you go to the Department of Motor Vehicles and you change a title on something, you go get your driver's license changed, any action at DMV, they will register you to vote unless you opt out. So if you're not paying close, enough close attention, your registration will come over to us as a nonpartisan. So when you do go into DMV, be very careful when they ask you about voter registration, make sure you change your party to what it currently is, otherwise they'll come across to us. We've had many people upset about that, all of a sudden realizing they're nonpartisan and they're usually not a political party or one or the other. So, well, and then there's that primary thing. What, what happens is we have um, the three candidates in the primary and we have the highest vote getter, which was Mark Kampf, who's currently the interim treasurer. But there's also a nonpartisan candidate running against him in the general election. So I suggested to the commissioners that they put it out to all the candidates, no matter what, to put in for my position. And that it's totally up to the commissioners who they appoint. At the Board of County Commissioners meeting, Merlino commented during an item concerning who will take this position. We have uh, in the clerk's office a uh, chief deputy clerk. And as far as, as far as I know, the chief deputy of any department would step in and potentially be the acting, uh, acting department head, in this case be the acting clerk. And so would she be willing to do this? Absolutely not. This is Sam. She cannot take the position. Next week on July 19th, the Board of County Commissioners will make a decision on whether who will be appointed to that important position. 
The Nevada Department of Health and Human Services is transitioning to 988, a behavioral health and crisis phone number to ensure help is available for those in need. The new three-digit number for the National Suicide Prevention Lifeline will replace the current phone number. During this transition, both numbers will be available for use. For almost a decade, mental health advocates have asked for an easy-to-remember three-digit number for people experiencing a mental health crisis. So, starting this past Saturday, nationally and and here in Nevada, the call line will go live, or it went live, excuse me. All behavioral health crisis calls through 988 will continue to be routed to the National Suicide Prevention Lifeline call centers, including Crisis Support Services of Nevada, which has been the Silver State's statewide call center since 1960s. To prepare for the transition of the 988 CSS NV crisis line, it's increased their staff and all of whom are highly trained in assisting with a range of different different mental health crises for ages of all demographics. They have also continued to participate in the National Lifeline Network, which means no call, text, or chat in Nevada will go unanswered. And First Choice Pregnancy Center is having their annual diaper run soon. They need items now. Nancy Irwin explains. We are so excited this year. It's going to be on September 10th at uh, 9 a.m. We are starting out the, pr the registration at Parker's Kawasaki this year. And uh, we have obviously the stops, which are Carmelo's, Horizon Market on 372, the Crowbar, um, uh, Shadow Mountain Feed and Tack, Master Tech, and then we end this year at uh, Lisa Bond Real Estate's parking lot. So we're really excited about it. Well, the diaper run is something that is very important to us. This is where we get all our diapers and our wipes, our inventory for the year. Three years ago, we started um, inviting everyone, the public, it's not for members only, um, because p families had come to me and say, well, we don't have a motorcycle, so how can we participate if we want to do the routes? And I said, bring your car around, and we even have families that show up bringing diapers and wipes to the end uh, route where we do have uh, lunches uh, set there for, for our bikers, our riders, um, our families. Clientele's is about the same, but pregnancy tests are up. Um, COVID babies maybe, not really <laughs> sure. But um, as far as financial support, we could use a little bit more of the help in that area. Due to COVID, there are, are some uh, individuals and um, businesses that ha had to uh, stop uh, with the financial support and we totally understand that but I can tell you we are totally out of wipes we go through it like candy so if you're not part of the diaper run and you still want to uh, donate to the center we would love to have some of the wipes uh, donated and uh, diapers fives and sixes seem to be the sizes that we're requesting this year to register, you can go to our website, which is www.diaperrun, and there's two R's in there, but one word, dot US. The registration form, the flyer, everything is on there for you. Or you can come by the, the um, center, uh, 12 to 4, Monday through Wednesday. We're on summer hours right now, and we can give you a form to fill out. Uh, the cost is for, now for the motorcycles, it's the, the uh Biker is 15, the passenger is 10, and they're to bring one package of diapers and one package of wipes. If you're a family, you bring whatever you can bring and donate whatever you can donate. Mom you can come by, yep, we're open 12 to 4, Monday through Wednesday. You can call us at 775-751-2229. It is 1501 East Calvada. We're the building in the back right next to Mercier Helicopters. A Nye County Sheriff's Office inmate is facing additional charges after a party came forward to say that the man behind bars also burglarized his home prior to him being arrested. The Nye County Sheriff's Office is reporting that they have arrested an individual by the name of Kevin Schultke. He is facing charges of possession of a Schedule 1 and 2 controlled substance. According to the declaration of arrest on July 8th, an individual on Savoy Boulevard called police to say that they had found Schultke inside their home. They say that Shulka was asked to leave and that he was staying in a trailer behind the main residence. Police spoke to Shulka on the phone, who agreed to leave the home, 
but said that he had to go back in because he left his wallet inside and four individual bags. After police were called and searched his possessions, they found four individual bags of a substance that was consistent with methamphetamine. Shotka was transported to the Nye County Sheriff's Office Detention Center. On July 9th, Nye County Sheriff's Office deputies were called to investigate a possible burglary at a residence on Patricia Way here in Pahrump. The victim of this crime advised that an individual by the name of Kevin Schultke had entered their home without permission. They said that that individual took items from the home. Shulka admitted that he took the items, but he said it was for safekeeping. Nye County Sheriff's Office deputies found the items at the local pawn shop on Highway 160. Shulka was then subsequently arrested for a residential burglary on Patricia Way here in Pahrump. He is facing charges related to that crime. And very observant deputies located a man quickly who was allegedly lighting brush fires as he walked near Pahrump Valley Boulevard and fled on foot. He was apprehended quickly by officers. Nye County Sheriff's Office deputies have arrested an individual that they believe was starting brush fires in the area of Pahrump Valley Boulevard near Bourbon Street over the weekend. Justin Woodall was arrested, police say, after he led them on a short foot pursuit. According to the deputy on scene, he was in the area near Discovery Park en route to a call for service when he witnessed a brush fire near the area. He also observed a person by the name of Justin Woodall walking near that path. As he was attempting to stop the fire from spreading, deputies were able to stop that individual. They noticed a second fire approximately 100 feet north from the first fire. Woodall was stopped in the area of Highway 372 and Pahrump Valley Boulevard where he was questioned by police. They said he had several packs of matches on him and several lighters, as well as a glass pipe commonly used to smoke methamphetamine. Police also advised that Justin was an individual who was a ex-felon who failed to register. Justin Woodall is facing charges of third-degree arson and convicted person failing to register with law enforcement. More News 25 right after this break. You're watching News 25, brought to you by Mountain West Lawyer, Injury Attorneys, 727-9500. Also brought to you by Silver State Health. Visit silverstatehealth.org or call 702-471-0420 for an appointment. News 25, local news you can count on. Welcome back. July is Healthy Vision Month, and if you've recently started working from home or have been a for a while, you may have noticed that you're starting a staring at a screen a lot more than you used to. Well, that can impact your eyes. We know that when people use screens for long periods of time, and, and, and if we're reading or really paying att uh, close attention to anything, we kind of stop blinking. And so it's very common, especially as people had more of their meetings moved to computer and spending more time looking at a laptop, that we did see some more dry eye complaints. Dr. Craig C. is an ophthalmologist for Cleveland Clinic. He says that dry eyes can cause symptoms like redness, blurry vision, and itchiness. Many people also seem to notice issues more towards the afternoon or end of the day after they've been looking at a screen for a long while. The good news is dry eyes won't cause any kind of long-term damage. So, what can someone do to protect their eyes? Dr. C. says start to make sure you have a comfortable work setup. The top of your computer or laptop should sit eye level with you. And you may want to consider getting a bigger monitor that sits farther away. That way you're not having to focus so intently on your screen. He also suggests the 20-20-20 rule. Every 20 minutes of screen time or reading, take a 20 second break and look at something that's at least 20 feet away. And during that time, you'll, you'll find that you're blinking a lot more, you're, you're relaxing your eyes a lot more, uh, and that'll help out with some of the eye strain issues that people encounter. And Dr. C goes on to say that you could also use artificial teardrops to warm and compress your on your face if you notice that your eyes are really starting to dry out. And if that doesn't seem to work, he recommends going to see your physician. Well, here's our very own Deanna at Never Forgotten Animal Society to show you a beautiful little dog named Batman. Today's Save a Pet segment is made possible by Realty Executives in Action. Put the team at Realty Executives in action for you. Hi, I'm here at Never Forgotten Animal Society. 
we are like in the storage area because we have a black dog with us who didn't like it so much outside. Can you imagine being outside right now when you're a black dog? Well, that's why he needs to have a home. And this is Batman and he is looking for his forever home. Batman came from Desert Haven Animal Society and he's available now at Never Forgotten. You can give him a call 775-537-8674 or you can stop by 520 East Street and come on by and see them and see Batman and take him home. News 25 Weather Cam is brought to you by Lerner and Rowe Injury Attorney's Office in Pahrump. In a wreck, need a check? Call 702-877-1500. Oh, more clouds and hot temperatures with possible gusty winds. John's going to get us a full weather update right on the other side of this break. News 25 weather is brought to you by Dairy Council of Nevada. The splash of cream in your coffee, the dollop of sour cream on your burrito, the melted toasty cheese on your pizza. Undeniably delicious, undeniably dairy. Enjoy what's real. Hi, good evening, Nevada. It's John Kohler from the KPM Channel 25 Weather Studios on a Monday. Great to see you after the weekend. Oh, man, I thought we was, you know, going to have some serious problems with my prediction of no rain. Saw those clouds come up last night. You know what happened? No rain. <laughs> there might be some rain today. We'll talk about that here in just a second. But Fernley and Fallon checking in in the upper 90s, 96, 99 degrees. It's 94 out in Carson City. Not quite the cool spot. That would be Total Pod today at 93 degrees. 95 out in Goldfield, 102 in Beatty. And Sweating Donkeys, my gosh, it's 106 in Amargosa. We've got, uh, that's the hot spot in the state today. Vegas seems pleasant at 101, and Death Valley seems just like Death Valley at 117. But here in the paradise of Pahrump, let's take a look. 101 degrees, that's our current temperature. That's a little bit much, but uh, it was worse earlier, 103. We're heading down to, to a low tonight in the 80s. We'll see that uh, coming up. The sun rose this morning at 540. It's setting this evening at 759. We peel back another couple minutes of daylight, add a couple minutes of night. Fans of night, rejoice. It's uh, coming on. Uh, low tonight of 82 degrees. East southeasterly winds to 11 miles per hour. Look at that humidity up to 30%. Yes, it's pretty swampy as we head on into the week. And look at all these high temperatures 106, 107, 107 until Friday. And uh, clouds adding on. We might see some sprinkles here and there. I don't see any calls for big deluge action coming. We had a 15% chance of rain coming into this evening. And uh, so we may see some sprinkles here and there, but I don't think it's gonna be anything uh, horrifying that you have to rebuild from, all right? Uh, temperatures heading down uh, this weekend from 105 down to 101 by uh, Monday, actually getting a little bit pleasant. There, we're working it in a five degree range, it's okay. All right, back to the desk, here's Deanna. <laughs> Thank you, John. Well, also in our weather, we do have an advisory monsoonal thunderstorms continue to impact Nye and Esmeralda counties through today with possible gusty winds, lightning, as well as possible heavy rainfall still additionally possible, um, especially above average temperatures, maintaining a moderate heat risk through the week for the Mojave Desert. So uh, be careful out there. <laughs> that does it for us tonight. I'm Stacy Jensen, and from all of us here at KPVM News 25, have a great night.